Chapter 3, Working with Classes, Step-by-Step -step Movie 3.1. To begin, I'm going to launch Xcode. You can find it down here in my dock. If you don't have it in your dock, you can go to Applications, scroll down, and select Xcode. So I'm launching Xcode, and I'm going to select Open Another Project in the Welcome to Xcode window. I'll go to my Documents folder, and here's where I'm storing my samples. The project we're looking for is called Swift Demo, and I can double-click the .xcode proj file. Now if I expand the arrow to the left of the Swift Demo project node, and expand that again, you can see that I've got class files, a storyboard, and an assets file in here. So I'll click the storyboard and I'm going to click this button here to get rid of the debug area so I can see more. And I'm going to click over here to get rid of the document outline. And here is my scene. It's basically a white surface and has a single label on it. Now I can actually run this in the simulator to see how it looks. And I'm going to select iPhone 5S because it's a little bit smaller, takes up less real estate, and I press run. So my build has succeeded, and no surprises here. This looks just as it does at design time. So we'll go back here and click Stop. So now let's take a look at a code file. ViewController.swift contains a class called ViewController, and as you'll learn in a bit, it's actually a subclass of UI ViewController. So this section of code here is known as a method, and the method's name is ViewDidLoad. A Swift class often has dozens of methods, and the one thing I'd like you to notice are the curly braces here. So this marks the beginning of the code that the method contains, and this marks the end of it. One of the biggest mistakes people make as they're going through the tutorials is instead of placing the code between these curly braces, they put it out here. And if you do that, you're going to get a compiler error. So just be careful when you're adding code. When I say to add it to a method, make sure it's between the beginning and the curly brace of the method. Now we're going to add code that changes the label's text at runtime. And when I say runtime, that means when the app is running in a simulator or an iOS device. So if I'd like to add a new empty line of code, I can click at the end of this comment line and press a return. As mentioned in the book, Swift is case sensitive, so you need to type what you see in the book exactly with the same upper and lowercase characters. So I'm going to create a variable called myString. I'm going to declare it as a string variable. That means I can only store strings in it. And the equal sign, I say store into this. It's basically what we call the assignment operator. So it's going to say, assign the word Swift, that string, and store it in the string variable. Now, because Swift has something called type inference, I can actually get rid of this declaration, saying it's a type string, because the compiler can already figure it out. It sees I'm storing a string into it to initialize it. It knows it's a string. In fact, if I double click here, and I go over to the right side of my screen to the quick help inspector, you can see that Xcode is showing us that this is a variable and it is a type string. So now we're going to add another new line of code. So I'll put my cursor at the end, press return, and I'm going to say self. And the term self in Swift is referring to the class in which I'm writing this code. So I'm saying view controller is self. I say self.lbldemo.text equals my string. So LBL demo is a reference to the label that's sitting over here on the scene. If we go back to the view controller, basically what we're doing here is in that label, which has a text property, we're storing the value that is inside of the my string variable. 
So basically what we're going to do is since that's set to Swift, when we take that value, store it here, that Swift string variable will be stored in the text property of the label and it will be displayed. So let's give it a go. I'll press run and sure enough, there it is. Now I'd like to show you the connection between the scene at design time and this view controller. If I click main.storyboard and then I click at the top of this scene, if I select the identity inspector, you can see that the view controller class, the one we've been editing over here, is associated with this scene. So that's where the connection comes between the scene and the code file. So let's go ahead and press the stop button. And we've met with success.